Blessings, beloveds. Welcome back, Anastasia, Cosmic Astrologer. Going to talk about Uranus going retrograde. And just the three weeks of, of August that we are approaching, um, what we have going on relative to transiting Mars, which is very, very, very significant um, collectively and, of course, for our own uh, individual lives. So today is the uh, 5th of August and yesterday we had transiting still within orb at the moment, transiting uh, Mars in Aries. You can see it here forming a square to Jupiter. And so naturally that's that's a big build-up of energy. Generally speaking, a Mars-Jupiter combination is a really good combination, actually. It's quite positive. It's, um, it's fortunate action, <laughs> believe it or not. So if you had, you know, a Mars... A Jupiter aspect in your chart that's that's what you're looking at um, regardless of the aspect the nature of the aspect will draw out different um, expressions of it relative to what might feel um, more supportive you know more naturally flowing naturally uh, easing into things such as the soft aspects and of course the hard aspects would promote um, more dynamic sort of tension energy which can lead to positive action as well um you know mars jupiter is a is a very uh powerful combination of energies but what we're really looking at is we're looking at a build-up right of transiting mars as he proceeds forward in aries before he goes uh retrograde he will form a square to Pluto and then he will form a square to Saturn. Now the square to um, Pluto happens, let me see, where's the date? Uh, 13th of August, so it's about a week away. So we're, we're really looking at, I mean, realistically, Mars is forming a square to Pluto already, okay? But in terms of its exactness, that will be on the... Um, 13th of August. So there's a build-up of this very powerful Mars in Aries in his own sign in Aries, a fire sign, a cardinal sign, which is all about action, aggression, um, initiation, expression, instincts, directing one's self forward and so you can see just by those key words how how incredibly frustrating it would be for mars uh having to have to go retrograde in the sign of aries which happens on the 28th degree on the 9th of september however before that happens mars is going to well i'll just show you what this looks like if we just animate this chart and progress forward, where's Mars there? It's at 22 degrees, right? So it's incredibly close to square Pluto. If we just go a couple of days further, there it is there, 13th of August. Mars is exactly uh, square Pluto. And then a few days later, it will be square Saturn. So what happens so look at uranus at 10 degrees of taurus uranus will go retrograde <clears throat> on the 10th degree of taurus i'll show you when that technically happens you see there it's gone stationary at 10 degrees right that's on the 15th and um <clears throat> it's exact retrograde date if you like technically speaking is on the 17th but what you need to understand when you're talking about a planet specifically an outer planet which uranus is that goes stationary retrograde <clears throat> on the 10th degree and if you look at an ephemeris or you know just uh, animate this chart forward what you will notice is, well, first of all, the cycle of Uranus retrograde 
lasts for 155 days and it happens once every year. And it just so happens that this particular cycle of Uranus retrograde, Uranus will be retrograde at the 10th degree for, uh, what was it, 84 days, which is virtually half of its retrograde period. The other thing that's very interesting about that 84, the, the number 84 correlates to Uranus's cycle. It takes 84 years to have a Uranus return. So there's something quite, um, <laughs> quite unknown, actually, that's really quite significant relative to why Uranus is going to be retrograde on the 10th degree for 84 days. I think that's um, that's speaking to very huge um, collective implications, actually, especially because of the nature of life at the moment and the conditions as they appear relative to this COVID-19 situation and so forth. So, I mean, the, the month of August relative to these aspects is, um, is incredibly intense and incredibly dynamic. <clears throat> and we are approaching a Mars retrograde period as well. And I've already done a separate video for that. So if you haven't watched it and you want to understand more about Mars going retrograde in the sign of Aries, please watch that video. But I just wanted to start off because the main, the main uh, discussion today is about Uranus retrograde and the significance of that relative to the current times. But the awareness of Mars, uh, let me just bring the <clears throat> current chart back up, Mars doing these, uh, forming these very important aspects called a square to this Saturn-Pluto conjunction that we've had basically defining <laughs> our reality as it were, you know, for, for quite some time now, which is certainly correlates to the events we are experiencing collectively. Um, Mars is a planet of anger. It's a planet of heat and fire. Um, so a square aspect is an incredibly intense aspect. It's incredibly dynamic. It's, it promotes action. Um, it is fundamentally experienced from within. It takes us inside. So a frustration can occur internally relative to a square aspect when you don't have an outlet for that energy to be channeled through. So Mars is going to be very, very frustrated by Pluto and Saturn because it's it's a square aspect which implies it, it needs an outlet and to, um, to express that energy. So given the nature of events collectively and i know not every country is facing the same restrictions um, there are variations of it across the board uh, in where i live for example at the moment we we have just gone into stage four restrictions which is pretty severe because um, there is nothing open but supermarkets and chemists uh, we are only allowed to go outside for exercise up to one hour per day. We are not allowed to, we've got curfews, we're not allowed to leave our home beyond 8 p.m. And this uh, stands for the state of Victoria in Australia, and this just came into play a few days ago. Um, so Victoria has been hit very hard in terms of what's going to subsequently happen to businesses and, and just the economic um, foundation and structure of this state. So this is uh, quite devastating in a lot of ways when we look at it from the external level. It's very difficult to cope with and to accept and it does bring up and evoke in many people um, the sense of feeling imprisoned, restrained, isolated, blocked, inhibited, um, you know, all those sorts of feelings, which I completely understand. But again, in, in my own sense of things, the, the bigger picture level of what's going on 
is it's far bigger than I myself even know that anybody knows actually because there is the element of life that connects to mystery we could say and there is there are things operating in ways that our left brain just cannot comprehend to begin with so in you know i've said this before and i'll say it again if, if we're going to frame this in any kind of way it would be to say that the world is having its midlife crisis it's the crisis of the personality so it's the the extreme imbalance that has been accumulated over, over thousands of years where the um the drive of the personality and the ego has just pushed its limits it's 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 gone to the furthest extent it can with its greed and insatiable desires for uh, what it wants you know to the exclusion of course of everybody else and everything else and um, to the exclusion of um, spiritual matters soul life uh, respect for the earth so on and so forth greed corruption you know all that sort of stuff it, it's just gotten to a level where it cannot go on anymore so unfortunately the way this comes back to all of us is that we <laughs> we face the circumstances we are facing and again i've said this before as well we we can protest and rebel from the point of view of our sovereignty our freedom our our natural birthright to express our liberty and so forth is being um, compromised and so forth and yes it, it is there's there's no denying that but if we remain in that space and only perceive it from that level um, then what we're going to see is an extreme aggravation through this Pluto squaring Saturn and um, sorry Pluto squaring Mars and Saturn squaring Mars because the the energy is going to be so amplified a Mars square Pluto aspect natally is um, well any Mars Pluto aspect is incredibly powerful without question you're talking about two planets of the will <clears throat> so Pluto is the highest will and Mars is the lower will but Mars acts as a a vehicle for for Pluto it's the transmitter right of Pluto's highest will but in order to have that alignment transmitted in a conscious way then it, it, it requires a person to have awareness to have consciousness um, there's no right or wrong in this. It's just we are everyone's at different levels of their evolutionary path, journey, consciousness, etc. But when we, when we are referring to the collective events, then the the evolution collectively does apply to all of us. It's not necessarily just our own individual perspective. That's one level. Sorry, there's a lot of traffic here today, which is really annoying. Um, so the, the, on the one hand, this is going to speak to perhaps what's going to be further aggravated or amplified relative to uh, people feeling limited, restricted and so forth. Um, you know, this has been going on since March, right, around about that time. We've, we've all had enough of it, really, honestly, we all have. <laughs> Um, from the point of view of our physical life, you know, it's um, it's been incredibly demanding and challenging physically, mentally and emotionally and spiritually as well. But again, it just depends on the person's level of awareness, focus, intentions, understanding, inner standing, perspectives and so forth. Um, and if we're able to uh, understand that it's not just about our own personal sense of freedom that's being compromised at the moment, it's it's there's there's a much bigger meaning to what's happening so anyway the point is that mars is going to become highly magnified and highly stressed uh during these weeks of august which basically i mean we could say it's it's really started already there's been this mars square jupiter um but moving towards 
the 13th of August, so say, let's just say the 10th of August, the heat is going to amplify. The intensity is going to be bigger than, than perhaps what we can conceive at the moment relative to the, the, the ether, you know, the collective ether of how people are going to be feeling. Um, so depending on, you know, the actions, obviously, of each individual and groups and countries and so forth, that's obviously going to be reflected through this energy. So given the nature of events and what's been going on, it, it is... It's, it seems pretty obvious to me that there's going to be more of an, an uproar in certain places uh, relative to how people are experiencing the conditions of reality as it is, as it stands. So, you know, in simple words, we're talking about um, more outbreaks, more aggression, more um, protesting, things of that nature can, can certainly be amplified a lot more. <laughs> And I think um, within our own selves, of course, there can be a level of very intense frustration as well. Um, but if we understand Pluto from the level of the soul and Pluto correlating to transformation, regeneration, evolution, then we can see this Mars-Pluto aspect as really an opportunity uh, for a few days to enable us to, to channel this energy in a, in a particular way in order for our own growth and evolution and um, alignment of the lower will and the higher will. Because the natural inclination, if you like, for most humans is to, to want to exert their own will, their personal will, which is Mars. But when we bring Pluto into the picture, it's, it's really asking us to bring into our center the consciousness of the highest will and when we the moment we step into some kind of space or sphere of our highest will we act very differently to what we would act with our own personal selfish will and desires that's that's a fact you know for, for any person so this is a very powerful uh, vibration for the you know few weeks of, of August that will either promote extreme conflict, crisis, tension, anger, or for the people that are working um, more consciously within their own path of growth and development and evolution, this can be a very intensifying experience of personal transformation. <clears throat> relative to your own personal will and your highest will and the integration of that, right, the assimilation and the alignment. So it just depends on who you are and how you work with this energy. Um, now, back to Uranus, Uranus is at 10 degrees Taurus, as you can see, and it's going to go retrograde on that degree. And it's going to go retrograde at 10 degrees and 41 minutes, right? So it's virtually on the 11th degree. And that's part of the reason why it's going to be retrograde for 84 days on that same degree. It's part of the reason, not the whole reason. But whatever the case, it's, it fascinates me that it's going to be retrograde on that 10th degree for 84 days. That's half of the retrograde cycle. So Uranus, we can say that we, we are already beginning to feel the energy of Uranus going retrograde, even though technically it doesn't happen until the 15th of August, the energy of it going retrograde has already begun because it, it is going to go retrograde on that same degree that we see it at right now. And it will stay on that degree, as I said, for 84 days. So people obviously who have planets at 10 degrees of Taurus, all the fixed signs, right? 10 degrees of Scorpio, 10 degrees of Aquarius, or 10 degrees of Leo. Now, you could have a planet between the 7 degrees 
uh, right up to 13 degrees, so w within that band width. You, you can even expand that further if you like. It just depends on what, you know, uh, what model you're working with astrologically so that you know there's a traditional model there's evolutionary so people have different allowances for for the orbs that are allowed but certainly the closer the orb uh the more intense the experience becomes right the the more it's uh, moved away particularly in a separating aspect as they are called the um, intensity decreases right but whatever the case, um, many have many people on the planet have planets at those uh, fixed signs close to the tenth degree. So this uh, this period of Uranus going retrograde for the next uh, 155 days is going to be a very important time for any of you who have planets in any of those four fixed signs. And what you are looking at really is depending on what degree your planet is, of course, um, generally speaking, what happens with Uranus forming a square conjunction or opposition or even a trine, but let's just stick with the hard aspects, you will have Uranus, uh, let's just say it was a conjunction, so Uranus will come to conjunct your sun at 10 degrees of Aries, right? It will proceed to, to move forward, then it will uh, go retrograde, which will be the second hit, then it will proceed forward again, become direct, and that'll be the third hit. So you get three hits on the one planet, basically. So it becomes a trip, what's called a triple transit, right? So, you know, that usually goes for um, close to 18 months, thereabouts, you know. So you're looking at a Uranus uh, retrograde transit for... Um, period of approximately 18 months where it, where it hits a personal planet three times, goes over it three times. Um, that's a huge, huge transit, right? It's a very important transit. So that's just something for, for you guys to consider for yourselves personally. But the, the retrograde um, component to this is very significant, especially given the nature of events at the moment. For a start, Uranus correlates to sudden and unexpected eruption of things that occur right that can be natural disasters that can be man-made disasters now um there was a derailing of a, of a train in somewhere in arizona about a week ago uh, that certainly correlates to uranus it was sudden it was unexpected it was an accident all those words correlate to uranus now yesterday i heard that um in uh lebanon beirut lebanon uh, there was a massive explosion from some location somewhere where there was some um, some type of uh, uh, substances that that connect with you know uh, creating bombs and so forth were uh, left uh, um, hidden or we, we don't know the, the actual answers to all those questions but that basically those things went off right they exploded. And the explosion was so big, there was, um, at, at this stage at least, there's at least 100 people severely injured. There's, I don't know how many deaths, thousands. Oh, sorry, 100, 100 people died and there's thousands that have been injured. The explosion was so severe, um, it, it, it was felt right through to the country of Cyprus, right? It, it smashed uh, through houses and shops and properties and whatever over many, many kilometres throughout Lebanon. Now, Lebanon um, has already been struggling economically um, before the COVID thing even hit, actually. They've had lots of issues with corrupt governments and, I mean, you know, who doesn't really, which country doesn't. But anyway, Lebanon specifically has had um, really big uh, crisis around uh, corrupt government and so forth and economically they've been... Um, struggling for many years now, uh, this this explosion has just created that uh, they're, they're practically sinking. It's it's really severe. Point I'm trying to make. The reason I'm mentioning this is because it correlates to Uranus. Because the time this occurred was sixteen, uh, sorry, six fourteen p.m. Lebanon time uh, yesterday, which would have been the fourth of August, and um, the event chart for that time. 
interestingly enough, had Pluto on the ascendant and Uranus on the IC. Okay, so Uranus correlates to sudden um, eruptions, whatever in whatever form they take. So that's that's Beirut being hit off by Uranus, which is virtually retrograde at the moment. At, at the very least, it's almost stationary retrograde, right? Particularly because it's a slow moving body, and so Uranus has already started to slow down. In other words, right? When it, when a planet is getting ready to slow down to go retrograde, that the momentum in that energy is it's intensifying because the the movement is is becoming more limited right it's decreasing and you might think in your head well if if it's if the movement is is decreasing doesn't that mean that it's it's less well no it's not it becomes more intensified and in fact um the stationary degree of any planet that's about to go well actually direct or retrograde is highly crucial highly highly crucial so for those of you that have planets at 10 degrees especially of the fixed signs uh, you really need to pay attention to <clears throat> that planet the house that it's in what it means for you relative to uranus right um so of course when a planet goes retrograde it's a time of review revision um contemplation and all of these things are internalized it's an internalized process. And so when it comes to Uranus, which correlates to individuation, which basically means being authentic, freedom, liberation, uh, revolutions, revelations, waking up, um, activating material from your own consciousness that either correlates to the past or the future, working through traumatic types of uh, memories for instance there's a whole uh, range of layers that correlate to uranus but uranus going retrograde at a time like this with the state of the world affairs and the build-up of energy from mars in aries forming a square to these planets i think is going to be a very challenging collective experience because um, I could be wrong, but in in I suppose in my understanding, particularly through evolutionary astrology, if eighty percent of the population lives within the consensus reality model, which is defined and shaped by Saturn, um, then we're we're looking at eighty percent of the population. Uh, responding or reacting to Uranus going retrograde um, from a point of uh, probably more frustration, actually. Because, see, it's interesting, right, that, you know, Uranus has been direct the last um, you know, five, six months, whatever it's been. And so, therefore, what we've seen externally is a lot of activity relative to um, people, you know, uh, rebelling, rebelling against the system, right? That's Uranus. It's always going to rebel against the system, right? And so there's been a lot of external, literal movement and action and energy directed towards those sorts of issues and matters collectively, right? So with Uranus being direct, it's it's really kind of enabled that external expression, if you like. But Uranus is going to go retrograde. So the shift internally of Uranus requires really a lot of a lot of awareness and a, and a lot of um, objectivity to be able to work with Uranus on a reflective level um, while while it's going retrograde, right? And potentially uh, work through material or processes that actually uh, provide certain breakthroughs for you, right, um, that promote a, a greater sense of freedom within your own self regardless of what's happening externally because that's that's really the, the, the highest sort of expression of this Uranus going retrograde would be that. It would be to arrive to some point within your own self where regardless of what's going on externally 
you have an incredible sense of freedom and liberation within your own self because you are not um you're, you're not confined by the consensus reality or defined by the consensus reality and therefore uh, all the conditions and and systems and things of of, th of things that are going on i mean true liberation and true freedom and i've said this before it, it doesn't come from uh it, it doesn't come from what you see externally god if it did then we'd all be screwed you know because what appears externally is is basically the the reality of Saturn, right? Because we live in a consensus reality. So if if we just were at that level, we, we, we'd all just, we, we wouldn't be able to feel Uranus in our lives at all. We, we just feel Saturn all the time. Um, a, an example, which I've mentioned before, you know, a person who's in prison, literally been incarcerated for whatever reason that may be. Um, but has a process of deep internal liberation within themselves through their their own personal inner uh, experience from a from a level of consciousness right uh, you know to to be able to get to that level um yeah, it takes it takes a lot of a lot of personal um personal development personal exploration of your own consciousness um of what Uranus means for you, you know, what, because wherever Uranus is located in your chart, that's where you're trying to be free. That's where you need to be free. And that's where you need to feel like you are being the most authentic, right? So it is about individuation. Now, um, I just want to also just uh, read this so this is relative to a square aspect right um where's my little comment okay um so the square does not feel unpleasant unless energy backs up on you right Tension here can feel exhilarating as long as it is flowing in action and not dammed up. Now, that's an important statement because when you see a chart that's got lots of squares in it, for instance, right, what you're going to see is an individual that's really active and, got a, and has a really dynamic life and faces a lot of obstacles and challenges but generally overcomes most of them anyway because a square aspect causes you to get off your butt and do something right? It, it causes you to create the necessary change for your growth and your development because the square is not, it's not a comfortable energy. A comfortable energy is a trine. That's, you know, a trine and a sextile is where you just lay on the couch with a b bag of chips or, or a glass of wine or whatever and, and you just chill out and nothing interrupts you. You're just completely relaxed. But a square is like, trying to sit on a couch where there's an uncomfortable object sitting right under your bum and you, you can't you can't sit there you've got to move you've got to do something about it you've got to get up you've got to move that object move yourself go and sit somewhere else it requires action <laughs> i'm just using a very basic layman's term example just to just to emphasize the point right so squares create action basically and can you see why this is going to be a problem with Mars leading up to creating this square with Saturn and Pluto? It's it's going to want an outlet. And the the ether of the planet is going to reflect this energy in a very strong way given the nature of events at the moment. So look, it it does point to some some possible uh situations that could be um extremely aggravated and and not necessarily pleasant but that might be the precise action that is needed for certain situations we'll have to just wait and see on that um so just to finish up on this statement um 
it is only frustrating when you have no outlets to apply attention, right? So that, that's relative to the square aspects. It, this is what I was saying before. If we have an outlet and really seriously, if, if you are a, an extroverted fire type person, so you've got a lot of fire and air, which means you need a lot of physical movement, movement in your life. It's, it's difficult to be confined in the one space, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you, you will have to find uh, an outlet for this energy, you know, those, well, those, well, really the three weeks of August, you know, more than actually what we've experienced previously in the last month or two months or three months or four months. Um, so it's, it's, this is an important point because if people are not aware of this, the, the only thing that's going to happen is it's going to be projected in a very um, unconscious way which can create unnecessary problems um, that won't necessarily be easy to manage subsequently, right? So if a person can understand this and can feel this energy building up within them, they can uh, create the conscious decision, right, to put something into play to help them have an outlet for this energy. Otherwise, it's internalized to the extent of frustration where it will just blow up it'll just be explosive and in the wrong hands that can be quite disastrous um <clears throat> okay and uh so back to uranus retrograde i think largely a lot of people um are likely to feel more frustrated with the events moving forward because as i said you know the last few months uranus has been direct and that has really enabled this external level of manifestation and expression of um, people's rebellious behavior and so forth <clears throat> in a number of different ways which you know has its root uh its root connection to a very important issue in life relative to fairness equality and justice which yes absolutely needs to be transformed and revolutionized but it had to come through i suppose um you know a lot of the the rebellious side of uranus which is to to disrupt and to bring chaos um and to bring disorder right and of course we've had uh, the goddess Ceres. E R I S <clears throat> squaring Pluto, which is the goddess of discord and disorder, right? So we've had all this external overlay of things that we've all seen, you know, the last few months. <clears throat> and what I'm suggesting is that with Uranus going retrograde, that could be more problematic. It could create more rebellion for some people, some groups, some communities, some tribes. Um, and for those, I suppose, that are working more within themselves from a point of more objective awareness and consciousness, not, not saying that people who are rebellious by nature and who are fighting for a cause are not objective or, or not aware. That's not at all what I'm saying. So please don't misunderstand. But what I am saying is that when, when somebody is vibrating with that Uranus energy from that external sort of rebellious level then it is going to be more connected to um you know uh, stepping into a community or a group for for a particular cause that usually equates to some um aspect of freedom okay um but there are a lot of people that can still have very strong values and views and perspectives on those matters and be supportive, right, to those sorts of issues in life, but without the need to go out and set, you know, a street on fire or smash 100 shops or, you know, whatever it may be, right? So there are different, um, there are different approaches within us. There's, there's, there's different energy being called forth and and so we all respond and react differently is what i'm trying to say but uranus going retrograde can evoke greater frustration because the the sense of um rebelling right against 
the systems and so forth, that there's going to be more limitation posed, I think, right? There's going to be a greater sense of restriction and some places will feel it more than others. Like, for example, as I mentioned earlier, in Victoria, the state uh, belonging to Australia, where I'm from, I mean, the next stage, if we if we went into it, would be stage five. And um, <laughs> I, I, I'm not, not really sure how to frame that, how to articulate what that would look like, but we are virtually at the point now of... Um, <clears throat> The streets looking like uh, it, it, it reminds me of like a Mad Max film. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of the Mad Max films with Mel Gibson that were first created back in the 80s. It's like it's a bit like that. It's it's this eerie feeling. There's not, despite the fact that there was, you know, a bit of commotion with traffic 10 minutes ago, um, that was just a little pocket for a you know, about a minute, but generally speaking, the streets are dead quiet. There's no one walking around. People are very uncomfortable uh, within each other's spaces, presence. Um, it, it, everyone's in a mask. Um, everyone looks like they're just trying to survive. It, it, it looks like a weird war zone type of situation. It's really, really, really bizarre. Bizarre energy, bizarre, bizarre um feeling when you're next to people and so forth. It's it's nothing that I've ever experienced in my entire life and certainly I know most of you would be able to say that I've, I've never experienced this in, in this lifetime before either. So, um, yeah, it's it's bizarre, bizarre times. All, another correlation would be um, the Hunger Games, the movie Hunger Games where, you know, people are, it's like, Suburb to suburb here in Victoria, um, they're, they're all sort of fighting to survive. It's it's just this weird, weird um, <laughs> uh, reflection of uh, what appears to be reality at the moment. So um, we are being hit quite hard here in this part of Australia is what I'm trying to get at. So this, see, this is already, this what we are experiencing, this can be correlated to Uranus going retrograde because even though it happens in a week's time, the, the energy of the retrograde has already begun, okay? And what's happening around the world is reflects that, right? And one example is what's happening here in Australia. Um, the other example was the explosion in Beirut. So when a planet such as a Uranus, Neptune or Pluto is preparing to slow down. I mean, this is the case with any planet really, but specifically with the outer planets, because they have much longer cycles, orbits around the sun, and therefore stay in retrograde periods for much longer periods, as they get ready to slow down, that, that slowing down period um, is longer and, and, and more intense as well, you know. So in other words, you can consider Uranus being virtually retrograde already, even though technically it's not quite there yet because it's going to go retrograde on the degree that you see here on the screen, 10 degrees, right? Um, in fact, it's going to go retrograde at 10 degrees, I said this before, 10 degrees and 41 minutes. What is it now? It's 10 degrees and 38 minutes. So you can see it's going to take a week right, to get to from 38 to 41, which is, how many minutes is that? It's um, three minutes, right? Uh, it's that's, that's how slow, right, it's moving. It's going to take a week to move three minutes. <laughs> so this is why I'm saying that Uranus is virtually retrograde at the moment, okay, and when it stops, that's, that's going to be a very important time, which is going to be around the um, 11th and 12th, around there. That you, we can expect those days to be quite significant, right? And then certainly the whole retrograde cycle is going to be very significant. But for those of you that are working with more um, aligned sort of levels within your own self, you, you can really take advantage of this uh, Uranus retrograde cycle to further develop your path of awakening, your path of individuation, 
because anytime a planet is moving direct, it's externally focused. And every time it goes retrograde, it is an opportunity to contemplate, to go within, to retrieve and receive messages, material, information, insights, um, dreams, visions, etc., from layers of your consciousness that are not ordinarily activated. So it's a very powerful time. And this can be, um, I think, even more significant relative to the current times because the focus is so much externalised relative to people's freedom and so forth or lack of it. So if one can find a sense of freedom and liberation within themselves, then it follows that regardless of what's happening externally, that inner, that inner equilibrium is not disrupted or disturbed. So that just depends on, on each of you, right, on, on each person on the planet, how they want to work with this energy. Uh, also, uh, just before I finish up, Jeff, Jeffrey Wolf Green says that Uranus retrograde intensifies the natural restlessness of Uranus itself because Uranus is that energy correlates to electricity and it can bring up a lot of anxiety, by the way, um, but it correlates to restless energy. So does Virgo for that matter, but um, different, a different type of rest restlessness with Virgo and a different type of restlessness with Uranus. But um, he then says, uh, relative to the above principles, so some things that he mentioned, um, the retrograde motion also promotes the release of ideas about a larger individuated and freer future than the individual is currently experiencing. Think about that, right? <laughs> Especially given what's going on in the world pretty significant statement um, uh, <clears throat> such ideas reflect the future to come Uranus of itself rebels against any sense of restriction or confinement when retrograde this rebellion rebelling um, cyclically or perpetually is intensified because of the release of future oriented ideas, these ideas creating the effect of experiencing restriction relative to the conditions of one's life at the time that they manifest. So think about that from the point of view of Uranus Aquarius, you know, correlates to the future and the past as well. So when, when Uranus goes retrograde, it, it goes into a dimension within ourselves where there's a process that's being stimulated relative to future objectives and ideals and dreams and wishes. And that can be a very powerful experience which will speak to uh, the life you will manifest moving forward, right? And it can also be <clears throat> activating material from the past that may correlate to trauma in some kind of way. But if you are ready to, to process that, it can be a very uh, freeing, liberating experience because all of us from a soul level have... Um, you know, conditioned layers, imprints, uh, past life memories, traumas, suffering, all sorts of stuff, right? <clears throat> and um, certain transits, certain experiences, certain junctures in life uh, provide an opportunity to, to release what's, uh, what's, what's lying dormant, right, in, in our psyche, in the unconscious components. Um, <clears throat> a simple example, I suppose, to just to expand on that a bit, 
have you ever had a time in your life where there's not much going on out there, you know, as in external events, external crises and things like that, but you yourself are going through a very deep, deep, deep uh, challenging process within your own self and, and the way it shows up is just through your thought processes, how you're feeling, your mood, um, you know, that can activate depression, anxiety. Uh, it can be just a very intense emotional uh, period where if you're not working with your chart, with astrology, or you're not working uh, consciously with your life journey and so forth, it can just feel like um, something's really disturbing you or beating you up and, and you don't know why and you can't identify it and it just feels like shit. It just feels painful. It feels horrible. Um it's really hard and the hardest thing is that you can't identify what it is that's making you feel like that because your life from an external level is is pretty much on track things seem to be going okay so that type of experience what i'm getting at is that that's an activation of unconscious material <clears throat> and when you have some kind of understanding and awareness about that um it, it can be a powerful process of releasing and healing and uh, li liberating as well, liberating oneself because you, you, you can purge and clear out, you know. Um, there's a lot of uh, material attached to the unconscious components of each one of us and that will be activated and triggered at different times in different lifetimes for different purposes and so forth relative to the soul's desires and what it's ready to evolve through so your run and stretch grade can you know can activate these sorts of things as well right um <clears throat> okay uh let me see i'm really surprised at the volume of the noise today it's I went out before and there was literally no cars, nothing. And then when I decide to sit down and do a presentation, they all show up at my house. A bit annoying. Okay, just looking through one of my books here. So um, <clears throat> just to finish up, you know, Uranus retrograde can be a very powerful opportunity to experience a process within oneself where certain layers of conditioned imprints, behaviours can be released breakthroughs can can happen in in your own mind you know flashes a flash of insight is correlates to uranus <clears throat> when you have a sudden sort of um vision you know a sudden inspired um thought a bit of information knowledge wisdom knowing intuition uranus activates intuition those little moments are very, very powerful, right? When you are working with this energy internally as consciously as you can relative to where you are at in your own life. So to put that very simply, we can, we can be totally rebellious and pissed off when Uranus goes retrograde because another level of our freedom will appear to be even more restricted actually <clears throat> so we can go with that and rebel that's fine i'm not making a judgment on that each to their own it's none of my business what anybody does actually or we can work with that energy inside ourselves and find a greater sense of um 
<clears throat> freedom within and the ability to become even more authentic by removing further layers it's like the onion you know you as we go through life we're just we're just kind of peeling back you know one layer at a time you know and it ta it takes time that could take it could take lifetimes to peel back one onion and it doesn't matter how long it takes relative to the personal evolution of an, of an individual it's a different ball game when we're talking about collective evolution though because collective evolution is pointing to collective um, perceptions and actions that need to come to um, a point of transition in order for the planet to evolve which is what's happening at the moment okay so those are my considerations and reflections i hope they're useful and i'll see you guys very very soon i hope you're all safe and well and um sending you all much love and blessings and thanks for listening bye for now